Yes, London has some world-class museums, and of course they're fine to visit, but if you're like me, you probably are looking for some more quirky museums, places to visit while you're here. So I'm gonna tell you about some of the best museums to visit in London that you've never heard of. Hidden away in Lancaster Court, just off of Oxford Street, is the Handel and Hendricks Museum. And if that seems a little bit random, it's actually not. In the 1700s, the music composer Handel lived at 23 Brook Street, and Jimi Hendrix, in the 60s, lived at 25 Brook Street. So to celebrate both of these huge influences on music in the UK, they have combined the two places together to make the Handel and Hendrix Museum. If you go inside, you'll learn a lot about both musicians as well as get to walk through Handel's recreation of his house and also get to see a recreation of Hendrix's room when he lived here as well. If you're into fashion and design, I recommend visiting the Fashion and Textile Museum in Bermondsey. It was founded by the iconic British designer, Zandra Rhodes, and there are no permanent exhibitions here. They change them out every few weeks, so you can actually come to visit multiple times and you'll see completely different exhibitions. They also put on workshops and classes, so you should check their website for your travel dates to see if there's anything that you'd like to attend. <laughs> oh, friends, Peruvian friends. So the exhibition that they have on right now is about how Peru has influenced fashion and textile. The Museum of Brands and Packaging might sound like it could be a little bit dull, but it's actually super interesting. So when you come in, you take a walk through their tunnel of time where you learn all about British history, but in a really unique way by seeing the types of design packaging. You learn about pop culture, how people dressed during these different eras, and it's actually really interesting. Plus, they have an award-winning cafe and garden that you can visit once you're done browsing. Every time that there's a big royal event in British history, brands always put out these like special memorabilia pieces of these like cake tins and different products and things like that. And you can see a bunch of those from the last century in this museum. For example, this is a bunch of examples of those from the coronation of Queen Elizabeth, 1951. No, nope, 53. She was coronated in 53. Gardens are a huge point of pride in the UK and have been for centuries. And we are in the Garden Museum here in Lambeth this garden museum was actually created in 1977 in an effort to save the church where John Transcendent is buried. And he was Britain's first plant hunter and most famous gardener. So his tomb is actually still here in the Sackler Garden, which is just behind me. But you can come into the museum and there's tons of history about gardening throughout the centuries. There's loads to see. It's also very kid friendly. And when you're done exploring, you can go and have something to eat at the Garden Cafe. This is Leighton House Museum in Holland Park, and this is the former home of a very famous painter from the 1800s named Leighton. And the house itself is absolutely stunning, but inside there's also a very impressive collection of artworks by Leighton, but also by his contemporaries, so is definitely worth a visit. Your ticket price includes a tour of the museum, but you can also have a free walking tour of the neighborhood where you'll get to see some other famous artist houses as well. Mm -hmm. 
If you're interested in buildings and architecture, then you should definitely stop into the NLA. They do workshops and talks, so you can see if there's anything happening that might interest you when you're visiting London. But in the least, you should come in and see the London model. And it is a small scale 3D printed model of the city of London. And it shows you both buildings that already exist, as well as ones that are being completed or are going to be completed in the future. So you see a very futuristic version of what the London skyline will look like. There's also an interactive digital map that shows you a bunch of different data points about the city of London, including the average housing prices in each borough, the amount of air pollution that's happening, and also where all of the listed buildings are throughout the city. If you want to find out more things to do in London that you have never heard of before because they're a bit more off the beaten path, then click the box that's popping up below me and watch my playlist of things to do and areas to explore that you've never heard of before. Gardens are a huge point of bride. Bride. Gardens are a huge point of bride. Oh my god. Gardens have been a huge point of bride. Gardens are a huge point of bride here. I can't stop. What's wrong with me?